G'day everyone, Greg here from Fish Play Films and welcome back to the BNSF Birdwood Subdivision. We're actually in the uh, garage today at the workbench and if you know me, I love a good opening and there's nothing nicer than a good tunnel. And getting uh, tunnels linings to look good uh, can be tricky, especially on curves. And I was watching Railfan 220's videos about tunnels. He's uh, doing some work on his layout. He's putting some new tunnels in. Cam does some really nice work. Go and check his channel out uh, on the Plains Division, I think it is, Cam, isn't it? And he's doing some really nice mountain railroading there and some good scenery. So go and check Cam out. But what he did do is make some curved tunnel linings. Now, straight tunnel linings are pretty easy, but uh, curves promote a bit of a challenge, and especially if you want them to look good. So he come up with a cardboard system uh, where he put some tape in and he put plaster on there on the inside and all that was a pretty groovy idea I've been looking at doing something similar but with curved pipe or something and I've been thinking about this for a couple of years now I really like his idea so what I'm going to do is take his idea put a bit of a fish plate film spin on it and make a custom tunnel lining with plaster and plaster cloth using a cardboard frame like this one now this is a my first attempt just at, Super straight, nice, easy one here. And this is our skeleton on the outside. See that there? And this is our tunnel opening there. And on the inside, we line this with plaster cloth, or I think Cam used actually just tape, uh, masking tape. But I'm going to try plaster cloth, and then over the plaster cloth, some sculpt it. Uh, or we used to call it sculpt mold. We have sculpt it down here. So this is easy because this is on a straight. But if you look behind me here, we have a curved one. And uh, this is, uh, has a lot more challenges doing a curved one. You have to be a lot more accurate. So we'll have a look at this one and then we'll have a look at how we're doing the curved tunnel lining. So let's get into it. Now, of course, once you've worked out where your tunnel's going and how long it's going to be and the curve and all that sort of thing, you need to work out how big the tunnel is going to be, as in size. Is it going to be single stack, double stack, one track, two tracks, whatever? And you need to make your ribs, which are these things. And these are the, the spine that will go along the tunnel. And you also have to make sure that you make them big enough to have a wall of cardboard on each side and the top, and also your plaster. So what I've done, I actually did these and I had to put an extra five mil, make it five mil wide, because it was getting a little bit tight. So remember, you'll have cardboard going on here and a layer of plaster cloth and then a layer of plaster if you go that way. So just remember that. Also, when you make these, make sure they're flat at the top and they're all the same size. They have to be pretty much identical as they go along through because you don't want your tunnel walls going in and out. And also, you make them the same size so when you turn the tunnel over, you have this nice little tabletop that the tunnel can sit there, your skeleton can sit there while you put the plaster in. Makes a big difference, makes it nice and easy to work on. Now to get your curve right, I went and made some templates, paper templates, and that took a little bit of time getting the curve consistent. I did one for the in, inner rail and I did one for the outer rail. And then you get your cardboard template, your cardboard base, and try and use the thickest cardboard you can. I was actually going to use ply originally, because uh, you want something solid for the wall to be able to glue against. Uh, but this cardboard here is a good quarter inch thick, maybe a little bit more. So it worked out really well. Now, you've got your base done, your two base walls, and then you need to glue the walls to the base. Now the walls, the walls need to be almost up to the start of the curve. Uh, and then your other pieces, your wall pieces, your ceiling pieces will come around and join onto the wall piece. So you can even bring your wall uh, height down a little bit, but bring it down just below the start of the curve. Now once you've glued your wall to the base, I go along and I'll be putting some of these braces in, or gussets, <laughs> just to put in there like that. And that really does make this wall rigid. And what we're going to do now is this is our, our ribs. Our ribs get attached, glued to the side wall here and also to the gusset. So you can glue them here and here. And that way they have a really strong 
bond there with the wall and the gusset. Beautiful. Now what I've done this end, I've decided to try a different technique and put the braces this way to give uh, the rib here more support because we already have our structural support with the rib going this way up with this bit here. So we don't necessarily need the gussets running for support this way. Probably need more support to keep these things vertical. So I'm going to try with a little gusset going that way and uh, see what, which way is stronger. But no, it's looking good so far. Okay, I've glued all my ribs on from the other side and rather than mark each one of these individually and try them to get to line up with the other side, I've made, these are all still loose and now I'll just go through and I'll glue them in place like that and put our little gusset in here and do each one as we go along and that way we don't need to mark this side. So we want to get the other side right and then we can come through and do this side. Right, a bit of a test fit to make sure it fits on the curve there properly. And most important thing, make sure my camera car fits through. It's going to be a little bit snug, but probably about 5mm each side, so that's okay. And this is oversized, obviously, the camera car, but anyway, here we go. Oh, we do. Look out, look out, look out. Very nice. Yep, that's good. Got our high cube there, and of course, it's got to be good for double stacks, but the, the double stacks are no there. No problem. Excellent. Well, here it is. So, we've got all our ribs on. And you can see there, that's what it looks like. Now, I'm going crazy, 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 crazy. And making this the whole length of the tunnel, which you normally wouldn't do because you need to be able to get in there to uh, get stuff out that gets stuck. But I'm just going a bit mad, er than usual. But what you would normally do is make it, you know, a foot long, as, as far as you need to see around the curve where you can't see the train anymore. So with this one, it's, it's about 500 mil, a bit under two feet. But uh, I'm just gonna go nuts, 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 nuts. And keep this the whole length, because it's on a curve and you can see in both ends. So anyway, so that's it done. And now all we need to do is to put some braces in the top. These little bits here. And they will go up under here for the uh, roof of the tunnel. So they'll support the plaster casting, other uh, plaster cloth or tape or whatever you want to use. And I'll probably put two or three straps of them around. And then, once that's done, we can put our plaster cloth on. So let's get cracking. Now you see here I've only put two strips, there's the centre one here, support, and then I thought I'll just run another strip uh, up here to support the plaster cloth, but I found that even though it does sit in there quite nicely, uh, as you get further on it, it has a tendency to slip into this groove here. So I'm going to put two on this side instead of just one, so there'll be one, two, three, four, five, uh, ribs or extra supports running on. A little bit of extra work, but uh, I think it's a much easier for when you're sliding the plaster cloth in. Right, so we're continuing along with our ribs along here. Instead of having uh, one per side, we've got two now, so it's five all up. And it just makes it a little bit better for the plaster cloth. Probably a bit overkill, but you know. Plus this tunnel is a bit uh, tight. So we want it to be reasonably well formed on the ceiling there. Now I've already changed my technique. What I was doing was just joining these uh, ceiling strips, just one underneath the other, and it creates a, uh, a, a ridge here, which I, which is fine. We'll be able to fill that with plaster. Um, and then it just goes underneath the next one, just keeps stepping to it. It doesn't get any worse. It's just always one over. But the last one I decided to do was to join it with a back piece. So that's flush there. And there's another bit glued on the back. And you see I've done another one there. And that's flush. And it's just as strong. And I've done it past the ribs here. So, so it's uh, you know pretty close to being supported. 
and that's how I can get a longer piece now. Bend it round, and you can see another one. Ah, uh, no, that one's not. Okay, so that one, I must have uh, got the brainwave up here somewhere. And you see that's nice and smooth. That's nice and smooth compared to this one. You've got the ridge there, and that one you've got a smooth joint. And I've done another one here. Even That even wasn't long enough. I've left a little gap there, but it's, I'll fill that. That's, so on the next one, uh, that's what I'll do. So there's a little tip if you decide to go this way. Right, so here we are looking from the top. And that's our form work there. We've got one more to go. And we're done. Right, well there we go. We've got our main skeleton done and all our uh, roof pieces here ready to go for the plaster cloth. Now I've had a, had a bit of a practice on this small tunnel here. This was the first uh, straight one that I, that I tried. And the plaster cloth is a bit of a challenge getting it to go in here, but I found the uh, smaller pieces work better. And they don't fold over as much. Now, um, some people, you know, you might want to do something a bit different. Cam used uh, tape through here and just put plaster over it. So I'm just trying plaster cloth just for something different. So we'll end this part one of our tunnel vision at this stage. We'll come back in part two and we'll, we will put the plaster cloth in and then we'll put the sculpt mold over the plaster cloth and see how that looks. So thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you in part two of Tunnel Vision. All right, thanks for watching. Hooray for now. Bye-bye. Now I've just got to make sure I balance it roughly. Get each side the same. Now, trying a few different things for the inside of the tunnel. This is the short straight tunnel. Uh, this is plaster in here now. And what I've done for, I've just got a wet spoon and gone over like that. I actually use the spoon to do all the uh, troweling in here. It works really well.